I think that many of us who really have a passion for video games can identify that one game that holds a truly special place in our hearts. Maybe it's the game that came with your first ever console, or maybe it's a game that got you into a whole new genre that you never thought you would enjoy. Or maybe it's simply a game that you just played at the right place and right time in your life for it to leave an everlasting impression on you. For many people, these games will be heavy hitter titles like Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, Final Fantasy, or something along those lines. And because of that, I often get a weird look when answering the question, what is your favorite game of all time, with Luigi's Mansion, a game from 2001 that can be completed in a few hours, and a game that kind of received mixed reception, especially upon the time of its release. So today I'd like to tell the story of how I came to discover Luigi's Mansion when I was a kid, and why I think it's a really fun little game that more people should experience. It was a hot summer day in Illinois. I was six years old and about to enter first grade. We were babysitting my younger cousin that day and my mom decided to take us to McDonald's for lunch. But it wasn't just any McDonald's, this one had a play place. So once we all finished eating, my cousin, my younger sister and I all went to go have some fun in the totally sanitary tube things. However, as my sister and cousin ran off to go play, I was stopped in my tracks after witnessing the sight of this big, beautiful GameCube kiosk, and on the little CRT monitor was the now iconic in my mind, Luigi's Mansion title screen. Just to put things into perspective, my experience with video games was very limited at this point. I had a PS1 that was a hand-me-down from my uncle, but I never bought any of my own games for it. I just had a handful of NASCAR and other racing games that he gave me with the console, and I never had any interest in the more realistic driving games of this nature, so this led me to kind of take my PS1 for granted as a kid, even though that console has a huge library of amazing games that I would discover later on. However, at this time, I also had a game Game Boy Advance with a handful of games like the Mario Advance series, which is how I originally experienced many of the classic 2D Mario games for the first time at that age. The Mario Advance series of ports is what led my six-year-old mind to realize, wait a second, I think this Luigi's Mansion game is somehow connected to those Game Boy games I have. And upon laying my hands on that McDonald's grease-covered GameCube controller, I started the game, watched that classic opening cutscene, and realized, I was right. That is the same Luigi, but now he's in 3D. So after having my mind explode before even actually starting the game, I continued throughout the opening section of Luigi's Mansion, being blown away by the amount of expressiveness that Luigi had in this game compared to his 2D outings that I had played on the GBA. I felt like I was playing an interactive cartoon. The game was just so unlike anything I had ever played before. Right down to little details like Luigi's hand nervously shaking with hesitation when he went to open up a door. I was so excited to get into this game and explore a spooky haunted haunted mansion with this character who is no longer just the guy who wears green and has a floaty jump in Mario World on the GBA. So I went through the mandatory training session, kind of got a feel for how to use Luigi's flashlight in Poltergust 3000 to suck up ghosts, went back to the room where I had met the old professor, and then it was time to go home. And it wouldn't be until Christmas that year that I would be able to continue my adventure. I remember coming home from school every day and practically giving my mom a sales pitch on how awesome the game he was. I would hear about other games from kids at school and tell my mom about them as if it would encourage her to spontaneously go to the store and buy me a GameCube with Luigi's Mansion and Mario Party, also known as this game where you can play a board game on your TV, but with Mario characters, as six-year-old me would put it. So after what felt like a lifetime of waiting, Christmas finally came and I got the classic Indigo GameCube that I still keep hooked up to this day, along with Super Mario Sunshine, Pac-Man World 2, Mario Party 5, and last but certainly not least, Luigi's Mansion. Oh, and who could forget this sleek memory card with a whole 59 blocks of storage? Luigi's Mansion introduced a lot of firsts for me in terms of gaming. It was the first game that I ever bought a strategy guide for. I remember getting stuck in this room, which I called Level 9 as a kid, because it was the ninth room that you were able to enter in the game, and I figured that out by looking at the map and simply counting the rooms I had been in up until that point, and I went to school asking my friends how to get past Level 9 in Luigi's Mansion, and of course none of them knew what I was talking about, so I was out of luck. 
eventually I brought the issue up to my mom and she had the amazing idea to call our local GameStop to see if they had the answer. Surprisingly, they did not know how to get past the ninth room in Luigi's Mansion off the top of their heads, but they did tell us that they had one copy left of the Luigi's Mansion strategy guide. And I'll tell you what, reading was not my best subject in first grade, but I don't think you'll ever see a first grader more willing to read than I was when I first got that strategy guide. Thankfully, there were plenty of pictures, so it didn't take me very long to figure out that what I needed to do was press this button that you are supposed to notice in the reflection of this mirror. Nowadays, this seems obvious to me, however, as a little kid playing this game through composite cables on an 18-inch CRT, it was not easy to notice such small details. But this moment also taught me to keep my eyes peeled for other little details in the environment that could lead to secrets, like this little mouse hole that you can go through if you scan it with the game. Boy Horror. Luigi's Mansion was also one of the first games I had ever beaten, and also one of the first games that I had ever revisited and completed 100%. I still remember the day I beat this game for the first time. It had been storming all day, and I was genuinely worried that the power was going to go out, so I was saving the game every chance I had. I finally made it down to that final room in the basement of the mansion, and watched the cutscene with King Boo that made me feel like my head was spinning. The actual boss fight with King Boo did give me some trouble at first, but after getting the hang of how to avoid his attacks, it wasn't too difficult for me even at such a young age. One of the best things about Luigi's Mansion, in my opinion, is just how atmospheric the game is, and the developers do an amazing job of keeping the player in the experience, not only through visuals, but sound as well. Every once in a while, you'll hear thunder crackling outside, and if you're in a room with windows, you'll see a flash of lightning. This might sound like an insignificant detail, but it really does add to the experience and make the mansion feel like a more believable location. Imagine if the only time you heard thunder and saw lightning throughout the game was during scripted events. It would just feel very artificial and not really have the same effect as random strikes of lightning. Another neat little detail in sound design is how Luigi nervously hums the game's main theme when in an unexplored area. But if you are revisiting a cleared part of the mansion, he whistles the tune more confidently as if he isn't scared now that the lights are on. The game's soundtrack was done by Kazumi Totaka, whose name you might recognize from his work on the Animal Crossing series. A lot of the more laid-back tracks in Luigi's Mansion almost sound like they could be in an Animal Crossing game around Halloween. Some of the sound fonts used and the more minimalist approach to composition remind me a lot of tracks found in the first Animal Crossing game for the GameCube, which makes sense as these two games were developed around the same time, and a lot of the tracks in Luigi's Mansion do a good job at maintaining a balance between both creepy, yet playful vibes which suits the game really well. Moving away from music and into visuals, Luigi's Mansion does a great job at making each room feel completely unique, and when playing this game as a kid, this helped me memorize the layout of the mansion so that I never felt lost. In fact, I have played this game so many times throughout my life that I could probably draw a map of this mansion's layout in the order of each room that you go to by memory. Sadly, I'm not kidding, but I'm sure that there are people out there who could do the same exact thing for the Resident Evil Mansion. The first room you enter after obtaining the first key has a bunch of paintings on the walls that talk to you and warn you about the horrors that await within the mansion. You have the study where you encounter your first portrait ghost, the ballroom with its spinning dance floors, the music room where you can interact with the instruments and get them to play the original Mario theme song, the fortune teller's room, and one of my all-time favorites, the observatory, where you look at the moon through a telescope, fire one of these things at it and watch it explode. And then walk across the stardust path to find one of the items you need to advance. And the coolest part about bizarre moments like this is that the game doesn't waste your time by explaining strange occurrences to you, or by dwelling on them for too long. Sometimes weird stuff will just happen in Luigi's Mansion, and it's up to the player's imagination to fill in the blanks for themselves.
Another thing about all of the different rooms that you visit is once you clear the ghosts out of them, the lights come on and they all just look like these really cozy areas that I honestly wouldn't mind living in. Just imagine reading a book by the fireplace in the study, hanging out in the tea room which always reminded me of my great grandpa's house, playing pool in the billiards room, or cooking up some food in this 1950s style kitchen. I know I might sound crazy right now, but this game seriously had my imagination running wild as a kid, and to this day I still love the look that all of these rooms are going for. I really love the original character designs for this game as well. The standard enemy ghosts, the portrait ghosts, and even Professor E. Gadd were all original designs created specifically for this game, and I don't think that Luigi's Mansion would be nearly as memorable if it wasn't for this bizarre cast of characters. Just look at how many times E. Gadd has popped up in other Mario games throughout the years outside of the Luigi's Mansion series. The standard ghosts all have very simple yet solid designs. They are a good mix of spooky yet playful. Yeah, some of them just try to straight up punch Luigi in the face, but it's kind of endearing to see them throw a little fit when they swing and miss. These green guys are just trying to enjoy some ghost bananas, and if you happen to slip on one of their peels, yeah, it might be annoying, but I don't think they did it on purpose. And these guys are just trying to give Luigi a hug. See, it doesn't even hurt him. Okay, okay, but these ones do hurt. Don't hug them. And then you have enemies that you will pretty much only encounter in hallways except for a few rare occasions. You have these guys who drop down from the ceiling and laugh after scaring you, along with their purple variants who do the same thing except they also drop an actual bomb on you. You have this yellow ghost that pulls a bowling ball out of its mouth and rolls it down the hallway. There are ghost mice, bats, and even these little spiky red things that just explode when you get close to them. The culmination of all of these creatures scurrying up and down the dark hallways really give the mansion a sense of, let's call it, ghost community, which really sells this old building as a historical and lived-in location. And oh boy has this place ever been lived in. Let's talk about the real stars of this game, the portrait ghosts. The story behind the portrait ghosts is that they were all rounded up by Professor E. Gadd throughout his ghost hunting career, stored in picture frames with the help of this machine, and kept in his own personal gallery. In the events leading up to the beginning of this game, King Boo frees all of the ghosts from their portraits and allows them to reside in the mansion, which he plans to use as a trap for Mario and Luigi. And that's how we end up with this colorful cast of characters all going about their business within the mansion. What I really love about the portrait ghosts is the way you often discover them. When you come upon portrait ghosts, they are just behaving naturally in their environments. There's no bombastic cutscene needed to introduce them. They are simply going about their daily routines. Most of the time you'll enter a portrait ghost's room and they're just minding their own business or doing something that tells you about their personality. Instead of entering the room and activating a boss fight straight away, you'll actually spend some time simply observing this character and watching the way they behave while trying to figure out when their weak point is exposed and if not that, solving a small puzzle in order to expose it. This leads to encounters with portrait ghosts feeling more like a scene from Ghostbusters rather than a level in a video game, and I really I really love that about these sections of the game. The portrait ghosts are also what really make the mansion feel like an active community of spirits and not just a series of disconnected levels. At one point early on in the game, you'll see this floating candlestick going up and down the halls, but you aren't able to do anything about it at this point. You're just left to ponder what its purpose is until you eventually find this fire metal and are able to use the power of elemental ghosts to light the candles, revealing this old butler, who you then follow to his quarters and capture once he sits down and reveals his weak point. Sometimes, portrait ghosts will subtly be alluded to through nothing more than sound, like when you walk past the music room before you even have the key to enter it, and you hear piano being added to the background music, which also fades away as you leave that part of the hallway. And you'll also hear this... ...when walking around this area, which you eventually find out is just this guy aggressively eating his favorite meal. Also, I just realized while writing this that I haven't really talked about the gameplay yet. It's fun and satisfying, albeit very simple once you get the hang of it. You stun ghosts with the flashlight by pointing it in their direction, and then capture them with the poltergust which feels like a quick little game of tug of war that has you pulling back the analog stick in the opposite direction that the ghost is trying to pull you in. Again, it is very simple, but once you get familiar with it, you can try to pull off little tricks like turning off your flashlight and standing 
standing in a corner, and once you're surrounded, try to capture a few ghosts at once. Or trying to capture a portrait ghost all in one attempt without them breaking free in order to earn yourself one of those big pearls. Which might sound easy, but if you've played this game, you know that some of these guys are pretty good at shaking you off. Luigi can also use his Game Boy Horror to look around in first person and scan objects. This really isn't used for that much in the game though, except for scanning mirrors that will warp you back to the entrance for a quick shortcut, and scanning portrait ghosts' hearts for a hint if you aren't sure how to defeat them. But what's really cool about this feature is that it's one of the only times that Luigi has, like, actual real dialogue ever. Sure, a lot of the time it just seems like a generic one-off quip that sometimes has almost nothing to do with the object that you're scanning, but it's still cool and it adds even more character to Luigi, and it's kind of a shame that they haven't brought this feature back. Another big part of this game, and one that offers a bit of replay value, is that all of the treasure you find throughout your journey makes up your final score at the end of the game and gives you a ranking depending on how much you collected. Your ranking is represented by a new mansion built for Luigi using the money that you earned, and ranges from an A ranking all the way down to H, which is just a tent. And I've always loved this visual representation of your ranking because as a kid it made me want to replay the game to see what the very best mansion would look like. Achieving the highest ranking isn't easy unless you know all the little tricks to earning some extra cash like where golden mice have a chance of spawning, scanning these hidden pieces of cheese to make them appear, capturing these handful of blue ghosts called speedy spirits that drop a ton of treasure when found hiding in furniture but are really tough to capture. Sadly, I had one of them get away from me during this playthrough. And of course, remembering to water the plants. Call me crazy, and maybe I'm just looking too deep into it, but I think that Luigi's Mansion is one special little game. I'm not saying it's perfect, I do see the shortcomings, but the purpose of this video wasn't to review Luigi's Mansion. I really just wanted to talk about the things I love about it and why it means so much to me. So, I hope this video makes more people want to try it out. The most accessible way to play it is the 3DS port, which is really cheap at the time of me making this video. But I do think that playing the game on console is the best way to experience it. So if you can track down a copy for the GameCube for a fair price, that's what I recommend. So let me know your thoughts on Luigi's Mansion, I'm curious to hear what other people think about this game. Or let me know if you have a favorite game like this that isn't super popular but is still really special to you. If you want to keep up with me and my hijinks, check me out over on Twitter or follow me on Twitch where I really need to start uh, scheduling some time to stream. Links are in the description for all of that stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.